Are you ready, Monarch fans? It's time for the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder, sponsored by Town Bank. This is the game the Monarchs have been waiting years for. One of the reasons ODU moved up to FBS, a home game against Virginia's top college football team. The Hokies are coming to Norfolk on Saturday, and it's going to be historic. And if you don't believe me, just ask this guy. I'm Bruce Rader along with Coach Bobby Wilder. Welcome to the Old Dominion Football Show. The Monarchs will host 13th ranked Virginia Tech Saturday afternoon at SB Ballard Stadium. Coach Wilder, did I overestimate the importance and the excitement of Saturday's game? Oh, no, not the excitement and the historical place that this game goes into. You're talking about Bruce, a perennial top 15 team. Virginia Tech's been playing football for 126 years. We're in our 10th year. They've traditionally been uh, a great program. And I think when you look at this game, Bruce, the magnitude of it, there's there's thousands of fans in our region that'll be there that are Tech fans or Old Dominion fans. You've got husband and wives this week that are on opposite sides of the sideline. And also, Bruce, I want to point out the fact that there's 12 games left in this series. We've got six games starting with this one at Old Dominion and six at Tech. This is going to go on for a while. All right. And while you might think that this game is just about ODU, I want you mm -hmm. to listen to this coach. Yep. Tech coach Justin Fuente is just as excited about this weekend as Coach Wilder is. This year we get a chance to play in the 757. Those people have been fantastic fans making that four plus hour drive to come see us in Blacksburg. I think it's a great opportunity uh, for us to, to come to them uh, one time. So uh, that's what I'm kind of getting at. Like we're excited to go play in this game. We really are. Um, and, you know, it, part of it's got to do with the venue and the location. The other part of it's got to do with the opponent that uh, they counted for themselves very well last year and, and we'll have to be ready to play. So, Coach, I assume there will be plenty of Tech fans in the stands, but mm -hmm. many of them have probably have never been to an Old Dominion football game, mm -hmm. and they might like what they see. Yeah, when we started, Bruce, 10 years ago, started playing, we were just developing our fan base. Tech's had a fan base for a long time, and as you know, there are a lot of Tech fans in this region. And I remember when we first started, Bruce, when, when Tech would be out of town or maybe have a bye week, a lot of their fans would come to our games. And I heard so many compliments about how Old Dominion runs a football game, the tailgating, the atmosphere. So we've had a good number of Tech fans at our game. And I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of those Tech Old Dominion fans together this weekend. I'm sure they will be. Okay, let's talk about your team, a disappointing loss mm -hmm. at Charlotte last week. Mm -hmm. But before we talk about the game itself, what mm -hmm. a crazy week that was. It was, Bruce, for, for everybody, all of us in this region that are involved with hurricanes. When you go through something like Hurricane Florence, I feel like you go through three waves of emotion, and I felt this with our team. First of all, there was hope, then there was uncertainty, then there was prayer. There was hope that it wouldn't hit us. When we got the evacuation order and left last Tuesday, it was looking like it was going to hit Hampton Roads and there was going to be massive flooding. Then there's the uncertainty. Where, where are we leaving? Where are we going to? Um, are we playing this game? When are we playing it? And then the uncertainty of when can we come home? The evacuation hadn't been lifted until uh, Friday. And then the prayer, Bruce, praying for everybody involved. We have a lot of North Carolina kids, all the folks that were involved uh, with that hurricane. There's, there's the prayer for them even now. All right, your offense scores four touchdowns. You mm -hmm. rack up 340 yards, I think, mm -hmm. in total offense. Right. But you leave Charlotte with that tough three-point loss. Mm -hmm. Your defense did not do a great job mm -hmm. of keeping Charlotte off the field. No, they didn't. They, Charlotte had 80 plays in this game to our 56. We averaged more yards in this game. We were more explosive on offense. The longest play they had in this game was 20 yards, which was the most frustrating thing, Bruce. In our first couple of games, we gave up explosive plays. We didn't in this game. We just could not get the key stop on third down. They were 10 for 19, and that's something we've really focused on improving in this game. But to your point about the offense, I was very excited about our ability to score touchdowns in this game. And you can't overestimate the importance of special teams, and That's especially correct. when it comes to conversions. Yeah, you've, you've got to be able to convert. We had that first extra point block, and that got us off track um, in that situation. And we've worked hard on that to repair it this week. Our special teams have been excellent consistently throughout. You can't allow those things to happen. 
like a couple of NFL teams that we've seen at the beginning Ooh. of the season. <laughs> yes. They're switching kickers right and left. NFL not for long, right? Right. I got to tell you something, <laughs> Coach, though. One particular bright spot for me watching right. the game on offense, freshman running back Lala Davis, yes. 63 yards, two mm -hmm. touchdowns, breaking mm -hmm. tackles right and left. Mm -hmm. Where did this guy come from? Yeah, he's the all-time leading rusher in the history of Virginia high school football, and it's just taken him a little bit to – get comfortable with the offense. There's so much to a college offense, and he's been learning it. He's working hard at it, but he gave us a, a real burst of energy, Bruce. We've had a couple running backs injured. We haven't been able to get the running game going, but that started with this game and how well he ran in this game, and you'll see a lot more of him this Saturday. That was going to be my next question. Yes. We'll be seeing a lot more <laughs> of Lala. So after three straight losses, how do you guys prepare mm -hmm. for the 13th ranked team in the nation and of course that incredible atmosphere mm -hmm. that your players are going to be seeing on Saturday. Yeah, before you before you focus on a perennial top 15 team, you mentioned their 13th, we've got things that we need to fix within our program. What's been so frustrating, Bruce, is throughout all three of our first games, we've had times we've been explosive. We've had times where we've even been dominant going back to the start of our last home game. And then we have these lulls in consistency. We're really focused on ourselves right now and trying to put together 60 minutes of good Old Dominion football that we're all used to. All right. Still to come, a very, very special guest to this week's One Minute Drill. Only the second time in the nine-year history of the Old Dominion football show. Coming up next. This is a very special one-minute drill. Look at this right here. Tenth anniversary? It's been ten years of Old Dominion football? Can you believe that? Year ten, here we go. How has time flown? And when you think back ten years, what comes to mind? We opened that year against Chihuahua at home. I was just hoping we would run out this tunnel without falling down. No idea what our team would be because, you know, there's no scrimmages in college football. And now here we are in year ten and we're, we're hosting Virginia Tech this year. What has changed about Bobby Wilder in those ten years? In those 10 years, I'd like to think I've become a little bit wiser while becoming a little bit older. Um, a really deep appreciation for being the head football coach. What is the one thing Bobby Wilder loves to do on his day off? Definitely enjoy walking the dogs, being out there with, uh, with Max and Jesse, a little bit of quiet time. They could care less if we had a good practice, bad practice, did we win, did we lose, just dad's home, let's go for a walk. What's the one movie that if you had to say, you know what, give me one movie to watch and I'm good? For some reason, I always end up back at Bruce Willis and Armageddon. I mean, <laughs> God, we're saving the world here, people. Bobby Wilder's asked to save the world. What's his superpower? Uh, the ability to fly. Yeah, the ability of that way it could get somewhere quickly, like Superman. They could get around the world, could reverse the rotation if need be. Uh, but the ability to fly anywhere in the world. What are the memories that stick out? You know, mm -hmm. the, the, the ones that give you the most joy, the ones that you think about first when you think about Old Dominion football over the last 10 years? Uh, they would all have to do with um, games that have been played here in the stadium. The first game against Chihuahua, the first home game against William and Mary, the atmosphere. I it literally on the sideline had tears in my eyes with just the crowd, how loud it was, beating JMU at home, hosting playoff games. I know I'll have that same feeling this year when we, when we host Virginia Tech. You got one message to give to the Monarch Nation, the 10th anniversary one minute drill message. What's the message to Monarch Nation? The message to Monarch Nation would be thank you for nine phenomenal years. Let's make number 10 even better. All right, now time for the Coach's Corner. Send your questions to me, Bruce.Raider at Raider.com. This is a very interesting question, Coach. It's from Ralph in Virginia Beach. He asks, have games always had weather and lightning delays like they do these days? It seems to be happening all the time. I thought football was supposed to be played in all weather. Not like when we were kids. Like, you know, you'd get struck by lightning, rub some dirt on it, and get back out there. It's, that's a great question by Ralph, and, and what happens now, Bruce, when we go through these situations is 
If it's rain, wind, snow, you play. It's lightning, and when that lightning gets within a certain distance, the university officials make a decision. Keep in mind, not only is it about player safety, they've got to evacuate the fans. So, yes, you're right. Back in the day, it was you just looked up and made a decision. Now it's it's all very detailed on when they're going to get you off the field. That's right. You worry about your players. <laughs> Dr. Wood Sealing, the athletic director, don't kill the fans. Oh, it'd be better we not. We need their money. <laughs> yeah. Big game Saturday. Historic game. 13th mm -hmm. ranked Virginia Tech at SB Ballard Stadium. 330 kickoff. I'm sure that the tailgating will be great wow. for that game. Any last words uh, for your fans, Coach, in less than a minute? Yeah, I hope they'll come out and be excited for the game. We're certainly, record-wise, we're not where we want to be right now, but this is an historic game. It's Old Dominion Virginia Tech in football for the first time at SB's Ballard State. First time of six that's coming up to show up, be loud, be excited, help energize our kids. And I said to our players, our job is to keep the fan base energized throughout this game. All right, you, I'm sure you're not going to have a problem with that on both sides of the stadium. This is what college football is all about, folks. If you have tickets for the game, don't lose them. They're worth a lot of money. Have a good time. Set your DVRs tonight in case you're not at home on Wednesday nights at 1045 every week for the Old Dominion Football Show. You can always watch it on wavy.com. We'll see you back here next week. Good have night, a great everybody. Night, everybody.